Okay, now. Be excited! <laughs> huh? Sit back. You said we're taking the back way? Yeah. Well, I guess the longer way we're taking the northern road. We're heading out west in search of gold. <laughs> well, not that far west, and not that kind of gold either. We're actually going to Grant County in Wisconsin in search of golden eagles. Grant is Wisconsin's most southwest county, bordering both Iowa and Illinois. It is home to two rare species of birds, gray partridges and golden eagles. Golden eagles are annual visitors to western Wisconsin, while groups of gray partridges have been found in small numbers and are not seen with regularity. Our route west follows the Wisconsin River and brings us through hilly terrain characterized by large bluffs and rock faces. This habitat is perfect for birds to pick up thermals and wind currents. After making frequent stops to watch dark silhouettes soaring over the bluffs, we encountered our first identifiable raptor of the day, a red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawks are probably the most common hawk species in North America. They can often be found along roadsides perched in trees. While they come in a variety of colors and sizes, they are usually identified by their dark hood, namesake reddish tail, and white underbelly. Some have a characteristic brown band of feathers on their stomach, known as a belly band. After our hawk sighting, we headed out farther west. In the process, we had a sighting of a northern harrier, as well as an eagle-like shape in the distance. What do you see? Uh, the next raptor we encountered was the national bird of the United States, the bald eagle. Listed as America's national emblem since 1782, bald eagle was once endangered due in large part to pesticides and hunting. With the help of conservation efforts, bald eagles have rebounded and can now be seen soaring all across the country. Adult bald eagles are easily identified by their brown body, bright yellow bill and legs, and pure white head and tail. However, the juveniles look very similar to golden eagles as they are all brown with light modeling on the underside. It takes about five years for a juvenile bald eagle to gain its adult plumage. The bald eagle is North America's second largest bird of prey. While we saw many more bald eagles, we continued to search the scenic roads in hopes of seeing a golden flying above. Just walking out in the middle of, middle of nowhere. Eventually, we came across one eagle that looked different. There's no doubt about that. How crazy is that? The golden eagle is one of the largest birds in North America, but is generally smaller than the bald eagle. Its distinguishing features are its small head, golden sheen on the back of the head and neck, long white tail with black tail band, and feathered legs. The legs are feathered up to the toes, which is only present in one other Wisconsin raptor species, the rough-legged hawk. Juveniles have defined white patches at the tail base and wings. The oldest recorded golden eagle was 31 years, 8 months old, and was found in Utah in 2012. How jacked are you guys right now? I'm pretty excited. Dude, this is so cool. I'm really excited for Bill, and Bill's clearly really excited. I'll have to do a lot of lightning on Photoshop. Would you stop complaining and just be happy? No, this is awesome! Unlike bald eagles, golden eagles fly with a slight dihedral, meaning the wings are pointed upward creating a V-shape. They rely on gliding more than flapping, and use their tail as a rudder to adjust their speed and direction. Alright, we just got a golden eagle. We're going to look for the gray partridges now. Bill's super jacked. Feeling excited about our eagle sighting, we continued on, traversing the bluffs in order to reach the flat fields where the partridges were last seen. Along the way, we encountered some of the local wildlife. There's a deer. Fox squirrels. Sitting, laying. Oh, right there. Uh, I thought that was like a cardboard box. I've never, look how fast that thing is. All right, so what we've been doing is scanning these open fields for the partridges. We're on our way to the partridge spot, but it's always good to look before you get there because you never know where stuff moves. Do you guys have anything to say about partridges? They're great. Well, he is correct. The gray partridge was first introduced from Europe and lives mostly on croplands. It's very proficient at hiding and feeds on seeds, grains, and insects. 
While looking for the partridges, we found many common birds, including crows. It's a huge murder of crows, though. European starlings, dark-eyed juncos, and American tree sparrows. We also found three species very at home in open fields. Elusive horned lark. The horned lark is a common social bird of open fields. They are known to live in sometimes enormous flocks and are identified by their head stripe, which extends to the back of their head and creates what looks like horns. They live at a variety of different altitudes from sea level to 13,000 feet above sea level. The American kestrel is America's smallest falcon and one of the most brightly colored raptors in the U.S. Males are generally brighter than females and have a slate blue and red coloring. They often perch on wires next to roads in search of food. Uh, there's one up over the ridge to the right. Up high. Way up high? Yeah. Okay. Here. The rough-legged hawk lives in the Arctic in the summer and migrates down to the U.S. in the winter. When breeding in continuous sunlight conditions up north, the hawks are less active and vocalize less from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. They have light and dark morphs. Light morphs are pale on the underside of the wings with dark patches, and dark morphs are normally all dark brown with some white on the bottom of the wings. The rough-legged hawk is named for its feathered legs. We continued our search, but realized we weren't the only ones trying to find partridges. Still looking for them, but there's a ton of predators out here, which leads me to believe that they're not going to be out foraging right now. That would explain why we may not be finding any partridges. After seeing several predators, we decided that the partridges were either hiding or were too far away for us to see. As a result, we decided to head back home, but not before making one last stop to get a better look at a gorgeous golden eagle. Where did the... I think they all went over the ridge. Along with the golden eagle were two juvenile bald eagles. The three birds circled around each other, treating us to a memorable aerial display. As we drove back east, we were thankful to have such a great golden eagle experience. We were disappointed to miss out on the partridges, but felt excited about the possibility of seeing them another time. Join us on our next adventure of Badgerland Birding. Okay, I had something else. Bill, I had a dream last night that we went to go somewhere to look for a ghost cat. Did we find it? We did. Oh, that's the best sighting <laughs> ever. Make sure you put that into whatever video we're making today. <laughs> like we found everything, but we did not find the ghost cat that I found. <laughs> we want to go with these dudes. We're out looking for ghost cats. <laughs> Tell me that schematic again. This is the tail banding right there. Diagnostic of golden eagle. Is this? Is that a fruit sticker? That's a fruit sticker. Desperado. Is that the new one? The new Desperado? The new <laughs> fox? No, no, this is the old fox. No.